Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to my modern C++ series. In this lesson, I'm going to go ahead and throw a little bit of an interview question at you. And then I'm going to talk about something really cool in the standard library, the numeric algorithms. Now, these are really important algorithms for working with numbers and we're going to go ahead and see why. But first to our interview question. So what I want you to do is just write a simple function to compute the midpoint. That is to say the average between these two values. Now, midpoint, of course, if we have two dimensions or three dimensionals, can sort of extrapolate this, but let's just work in one dimension for now here. So the midpoint between four and one. So let's go ahead and write this function out here. Int midpoint, I'll take in the first value, the second value, and I'll just return the average between them. Okay, simple enough here. So let's go ahead and compile and run this. I'll use C20 because that's what we've been using in this series. And it compiles. And if I run it, this works. I mean, effectively, this works here. Now, of course, the interesting thing with midpoint is, well, if you've been programming for a little while, you'll expect this to be the correct result. 4 plus 1 gives us the value of 5. We divide it by 2. That's 2.5. And, and then we just chop off the 0.5. Because we know that we're working with integers here, right? Okay. So with that said, You've been programming for a while, and now you go ahead and say, well, okay, now I actually want a more precise result. I'm going to go ahead and overload this. Let's go ahead and make these floats. And I got to be really careful and make sure I return a float. And then we go ahead and compile and run this. And, hmm, okay, so we still got our result of two here. So what are our options here? Well, we can go ahead and get rid of this here, this integer version. Or we could be a little bit more specific in our types. And let's see if we promote one of these each to a float here. And, oops, I do need to put the zero there. Then, oh, well, still an error here. Call of overload is ambiguous. Okay, so how could we fix this? Well, we probably want to make sure that the types match here. So one thing that we can do if you've been watching my series is just make this a generic function. So now we don't really have to choose between int and float, but we can be a little bit more generic here. So let's go ahead and do the class type name. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and put, um, oops, let me make sure I type this properly in a template. And I can do type name or class. And then T is the convention here. And then usually folks put it on a different line here, midpoint. Uh, let's see. Well, the return type is going to be T, the first argument, and the second value. And then we'll just return A plus B divided by 2 here. Okay. And let's go ahead and comment out these versions here. Let's see if that helps us here. Can the class template argument deduction help us out here? Well, we're still going to run into the same error. It's not smart enough to figure out the types here. So I could specify two types and then let C++'s type system take care of the integer promotion here. Um, let's go ahead and try that out. Class uh, T2 here. Built out T2. And we'll just always return, oh, I suppose, whatever the first type is. Uh, and that gives us two. Hmm. But if I flip this to two, well, then I get 2.5 based off the integer promotion tools. And if you've seen my series on generics, you realize that this is a fundamental problem and that we could work it out with modern C++ by using auto. Okay. But the point that I'm getting at here is this implementation of midpoint isn't necessarily very trivial in some sense. We have to think about a few of these corner cases. Now, it actually gets a little bit worse for us here. So let me go ahead and comment out our templated solution. So a bit tricky to get uh, arguments correct here. <laughs> uh, and let's go ahead and bring in our integer solution here. Now, I can go ahead and run this here. And it will, again, by the promotion rules in C++, just treat this as a integer here. Okay, so let's go ahead and work with that. Let's assume we have a tricky or not so tricky case here. Back to 4 and 1 here. But now I want to go ahead and throw a little bit of another curveball at you. And to do this, let me go ahead and open up another web page here. This is the numeric limits here. And basically, I want to see, instead of just adding 4 and 1, and again, this is what makes it kind of an interesting interview question, 
let's just go ahead and create two new values here, A here. And using numeric limits here, basically I want to go ahead and figure out what the maximum integer is. And let's go ahead and see if we could find here numeric limits and how to use this code here. Int, let's grab the max and, well, let's just work with that here. Or max minus one, doesn't really matter. Uh, and we'll go ahead and include limits. And then we'll go ahead and do uh, B here. And then let's go ahead and compute the midpoint between these two values here. Okay, so hopefully you understand the experiment here, or maybe you're going to see what's going wrong here. A and B. And the maximum value here, let's go ahead and just print it out here. A is, just to give you a reference, so we know what the actual uh, maximum value is. And I'm just subtracting one arbitrarily. It could be 10 or 9 or something. Uh, but the value that we get here for A is 2 billion something. Okay, right? 3, 3, 3, yep, and then 2 billion. But is the midpoint of 2 billion plus 2 billion divided by 2 negative 2? Hmm, okay. So clearly we can see that something interesting is going on here and that my midpoint formula is incorrect, okay? It's maybe not handling some of the cases properly with mixing floating point. Okay, so that's a template issue. You can watch my generic video on that. But there is some sort of issue here. Now, we could try to fix this with some other sort of midpoint formula, and some folks might suggest doing, um, if we subtract B minus A first and compute a difference, so something like this, B minus A, um, and then we add in A, and then we... Uh, divide by two, something like this uh, is another way to effectively do the same thing. We're still going to run into the same problem just for different values here. Okay, so midpoint is not super trivial. Uh, and that's what makes this sort of an interesting interview question for thinking about some of these different things, because we have to know a little bit about types, integers, or does this work for unsigned types? Well, I can tell you if I make these unsigned, this is going to just wrap around the value, which is probably what we want. But for integers, this does something, you know, even kind of stranger here. So my point of this is that we're going to want to look to the standard template library here. And in the numerics library here, there are numeric algorithms. So if you've been watching this series recently or looking through the playlist, we've been doing a lot of algorithms, but there are special numeric algorithms for us. And the one I want to start off with is the midpoint here, which again computes the difference between two numbers or pointers. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And the first one that we're going to want to take a look at here, which is a C20 feature, both of these, is in fact just computing the midpoint between two numbers here. Now, there's another interesting overload of this that takes in pointers. We'll take a look at that towards the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. Um, but basically, what we want to do is just compute the midpoint of integers, floating point, or pointers. Okay, so we'll try to play around with this. We'll see if it breaks anywhere. Now, it does have some interesting behavior where um, half of the, it takes half of the sum of A and B, just like our formula. So let's go ahead and highlight that, and that's exactly what we've done here. No overflow will occur, though. Okay, so the standard library implementers have figured out how to either promote those types or otherwise use instructions to make sure that uh, we don't get overflow. Um, and then if A and B have integer type and the sum is odd, the result is rounded towards A. Okay, so if these are integer types, that means we'll get different values here when we do 4 and 1 and 1 and 4 here, which is kind of interesting here. Um, so let's go ahead and try uh, with this example the standard midpoint and I'll put in standard midpoint here and then let's just put a little end line here just so we can read our output um, and oops let me make sure I bring in numeric numer let's see numeric there we are and again that's the header if we look at the top of the file here um, oops not, not at this window but here numeric okay all right let's go ahead and try that out here And let's see what our results are. So our results for our midpoint of 4 and 1 and 1 and 4 is 2 and 2. But the results for this 4 and 1, well, it actually rounds up because it's taking the first value and it's giving us 3, which might be interesting. 
And in this one, it's leaning us more towards the value one. So it actually gives us two as we might expect based off the truncation rules. So this is a little bit of an interesting behavior here. And you'll have to think about whether or not you'll actually want that behavior. Um, and if you don't want that behavior, then of course, you know, you can use your own midpoint to just have it truncated. Or you could use the function um, for, well, I guess just, again, writing your own midpoint and uh, truncating it yourself uh, would be would be fine here. Um, but interestingly, let's see if this gives us anything else useful here. Uh, if we go ahead and run, again, this function here with standard midpoint, and let's see if it fixes this problem here, where if I add two really big integers, that it gives me the you know, very incorrect value, right? Adding 2 billion plus 2 billion, the midpoint is clearly not negative 2. So if I go ahead and run this, this looks like, well, uh, the actual value that we want, right? If I add the two of the same numbers, uh, minus 1, and divide them by 2, right, I get the number back. Okay, so that is giving us the correct behavior, and we're able to handle overflow by using midpoint here. So that might be, again, another reason why you want to write midpoint uh, or use the standard template library midpoint function. It'll handle the overflow situation for you properly. Now, interestingly, again, as I suggested, there is this midpoint here, which will compute the midpoint um, in a, well, basically some type where you can have a pointer to it. Okay, now we do need to make sure that it's pointing to the same collection wherever you're doing this. And this is for an array object. And I suspect that's why you have that sort of interesting rounding behavior, although I'm not 100% uh, um, sure uh, why they do that division here. Um, but let's go ahead and see here. Um, and again, they're, they're giving us the, uh, you know, a, a possible implementation here. Um, let's go ahead and see what the pointers here, if we use those here. Now, you can see this example for text. That's actually a nice example here. Um, so let's actually use that here. Uh, let's go ahead and give a name here. It'll be a const char star name. Uh, and it's just going to be a literal string here. Let's go ahead and do it with my name. And let's go ahead and try a few combinations uh, of things here. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a uh, pointer p to name plus, uh, I don't know, three or something. And do another one with q name plus five. And let's go ahead and see what the midpoint is. Uh, I'll take the midpoint here of P and Q. And let's see what we get here. If I run this. And it gives us back this string here, which is effectively, uh, well, if I'm adding three from the start and five from the start, uh, effectively the fourth position. So zero, one, two, three. And then space uh, SHA here is exactly what we get here. So it's kind of interesting that I can run this midpoint function on uh, pointers as well uh, if I have a contiguous array here. Now, again, uh, if I pass these as like uh, 5 and 3, again, uh, we're going to get the same result because I'm just sort of adding these um, and then taking the average of them. So for a contiguous uh, address, it's not going to matter there. Okay, so you can see there our example here. Uh, as well here. All right, so that's midpoint. Midpoint's a really uh, nice sort of uh, algorithm, again, in the standard type of library because it handles some of these cases like overflow, for instance. Now, the one thing that we didn't uh, test yet that we were showing off at the start of the video, so let's go ahead and just do one more example uh, towards the end here. Let's go ahead and do just one more, just playing around uh, with floating point values. Uh, just out of curiosity here, let's see if I do 4.0, 1.0. Uh, and these are floating point values. They're doubles here. But let's go ahead and try to mix uh, and match them, 2.5. Uh, what if this is an integer type? And let's go ahead and make the second one an integer type. Let's see if it properly handles that case here. Uh, no, this is going to give us an error here, which, again, I'm okay with. Um, and that's sort of what we want. Um, I mean, that's a reason to... Again, we probably actually want this as annoying as it is to not just say like, hey, you know, up convert this to uh, 1.0 and just do it because there is a tight mismatch here. OK, so we don't necessarily want to just uh, execute this function here because, again, 
If you don't have types that are the right values, again, maybe there is an issue or whatever the incoming data is is uh, is wrong. Okay, so again, that's something that you just need to think about uh, how you'll want to handle that behavior if you do. Um, but I think probably airing out again when you're working with two different data types, because again, we sort of run into these problems where if one number is unsigned, another one signed, um, that causes problems. So again, you know. Uh, depending on your field, these things matter maybe more or less in the domain that you're programming. Uh, but the main thing is to know that we have midpoint available. It'll handle the common case of things like overflow. We do have to pay attention a little bit here on our arguments for which direction it's going to round to if you want that behavior versus if you're just expecting it to truncate. So that's something that you'll have to uh, otherwise pay attention to uh, if you're getting a uh, round result here. So again, nice little puzzle. You can think about it a little bit more. There's a lot of great content um, otherwise on the internet uh, talking about this. And I think it is a common interview question for some folks here. So think about how you'll write midpoint. Think about how you would address this issue. And otherwise, consider using this safer implementation of midpoint uh, to just handle it for you built into the library. Okay, folks, with that said, as always, thanks for your time and attention. Uh, I'd like to draw your attention to if you want to track your progress as you're following along all these C videos, you can sign up for free at courses.mshaw.io here. And I did release a new course on C programming here for the absolute beginner who wants to sort of go from start to finish and ramp up or just review a lot of the stuff that we've covered here on YouTube. Uh, feel free to check that out. But as as always, thank you for your time and attention, folks. Thanks for sticking with me here. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video as we continue exploring even more cool C++ stuff.